big and wrapped in yellow and red. The mobile billboard for affordable roofing is hard to miss, but look closely and you'll see this business offers a unique service, perhaps going above and beyond the rest of the competition, taking a back seat to the latest technology. Inspections are now some assembly required with no ladder required. The camera shoots in 4K video. Drones are just the lift. Owner David Boggs needs to keep himself and his crews more grounded on the job. Right now we're looking at the flashings, it's on the dormers. An unmanned inspection over the roof. Oh, it's incredible. Means no man on the roof. This roof is a 12-12 uh, pitch. Too steep to walk on and too much time. Time we fasten a rope and harness. To then safely inspect. It takes us hours to do. With a drone. We're in and out within 30 to 45 minutes time. There are so many aerial advantages. To our crew, we can uh, show them any trouble areas or things when it comes time for the install. Drones have propelled business to new heights. <laughs> raising the roof on home improvement. It's a time saver, it's safe, and it's also impressive to the homeowner to be able to see what we see. Playing by the rules. You need to be below 400 feet, uh, maintain a, a line of sight of the drone, never fly over people. Boggs has been flying drones for more than two years for business and for pleasure. It's an incredible camera. No perversion of that. The biggest misconception is that people think that they're spy toys. Which he says has fueled paranoia. And that fear has critics taking shots. It's just mind boggling to what took place that day. In the 42 year old's case, quite literally. My wife, she said, uh, somebody's shooting. And then boom, boom, boom. And then the drones just, it falls out of the sky. William the Meredith never denied blasting Boggs's Phantom here. 3 Pro. One of the pellets from the shotgun blast hit the propeller broke it off. Meredith, headlining national and international news as the drone slayer, suddenly disappeared from our radar after agreeing to be interviewed. Decided to take a shotgun in a, in a, in a neighborhood and start firing rounds off into the sky. But previously charged with first degree criminal mischief. Like why would you do that? Meredith's defense in Bullock County Circuit Court accused Boggs of being a peeping Tom. And he nice? had witnesses wearing mercy. Team he Willie t-shirts take the stand. We, you know, got pretty intimate in the pool earlier that day. Corroborating his past claims to the media that the drone was also checking out his sunbathing daughters. I mean, it was lower than the trees. Boggs <laughs> argues stupidity. Flight data proves he was way up in the sky. At the time we crossed Mr. Meredith's house, we was over 200 feet in the air. We was just passing by. And who would ever thought that just passing by would equate to uh, your brand new drone getting shot out of the sky. The judge didn't see it that way. It was an invasion of their privacy. That even shooting a gun in a neighborhood, in this case, was justified. He had the right to shoot at this drone and I'm gonna dismiss this charge. So could Boggs have been charged? There was nothing on the books. There is nothing on the books in Kentucky. State Rep Diane St. Ange expects her bill, an act relating to public safety, will fly through the legislature in next year's session. It's one that balances the um, public rights, public uh, privacy rights that we have, and uh, law enforcement. Police use of a drone in an investigation would require a search warrant. Policing privacy, St. Ange says, is also covered. They cannot just hover around your property. No matter how high the hover is. So right now I'm on camera, a 4K camera mounted on a Phantom 4 Pro, which is a high-end recreational drone. So just how good are these cameras for spying on people? Right now, we're at 25 feet. David, bring it up to 50. 50 feet. So what does 100 feet look like? 100 feet. Let's go 200 feet. And finally, the altitude his previous drone got shot down at. Now I'm at the magical height, the height in which I was shot down by the drone slayer. So as you can see, I'm just a speck on the screen at 272 feet up in the air. Quite frankly, the camera just doesn't have the capability 
to zoom in on you to spy. So in Boggs' view, a drone would have to get up close and personal for a peeping Tom, right up to a window to peek inside. And even though there have been complaints about that happening, Boggs says, just listen. Does that sound like stealth? It's the biggest bee or wasp you've ever heard. It's it's buzzing, baby. We don't we don't go into what you can or cannot see. Or what you can and cannot hear. State Rep St. Ange says with the technology of tomorrow, you can just picture what drones and their cameras will be able to do. It changes so quickly um, that you need a baseline. Judging from Governor Bevin's peeping Tom tweets and what he said on WHAS radio with Terry Miners concerning the media and drones. And they're flying around capturing film of my family and of my vehicles coming and going. As well as his own privacy. There really should be rules. It's likely the governor would sign the bill into law. Outside of business purposes, Bog says he'd be okay with defining private airspace over someone's home. Absolutely, I think that there should be a buffer zone. But Boggs complains he and other drone experts should be part of the solution. Come talk to someone like me. That lawmakers should share the controls before landing. New laws. Make informed decisions about our hobby. They're not perverted toys for, for bad boys. John Charlton, WHAS 11 News. When in Nulu, why not try something new? Plenty to choose from, from the menu of eateries. Fajul, no peppers. But one particular dish. Russ, you're working a hummus? An appetizer, if you will, of possibly the next big thing. An entree now at the Mine Cafe sustainable and served as well at harvest. Carp, really? Yes, really. These non-believers at first. They now have faith in executive chef Patrick Roney. They come specifically for carp now. Chef Roney's kitchen keeps it local. It only come around once a year. Cooking with locally grown ingredients. From the creeks and lakes. And silver carp are just that. Your piece on it, I was, you know, it's just, it's amazing how much they're, they're bringing in. 8,000 pounds in this haul alone, more than 35,000 for the week. Just one tiny spot on the mammoth Ohio River, overfishing the invasive species just isn't going to happen. So Kentucky processing plants like Two Rivers Fisheries are capitalizing on the problem, exporting millions of pounds. Asian carp each year to feed an enormous appetite overseas, back home. That carp is going with his next pick. Well, it's an acquired taste, but a growing one. And at harvest, silver carp. Oh, that's gold on my menu. Currently, there are three dishes to choose from. Crusted in a uh, blue cornmeal, just home-cooked goodness. Um, we also have a, um, a Silver carp niçoise salad. We just substituted out the tuna with carp. And then the third one, um, I put a, uh, a beet carpaccio on and we garnish it with a beet pickled deviled egg that's stuffed with a smoked carp dip, if you will. All sound good, but is it? What does this party of six think? Enjoy. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Thank you. I cut it up into six chunks. So this is like, I guess like blackened. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. Blackened was spot on. Even my little girl would eat it, so. <laughs> if you're willing to try it, you, you won't be disappointed. Carpe diem. Harvest is seizing the day on this fish. Big success here at Harvest for sure. Yeah, I won't, I won't be taking it off anytime soon. At Louisville's Wayside Christian Mission, there can often be a race to get a bed. But on the third floor, one permanent resident Come on, Spike. always takes it slow. Yeah, you're doing it. Because that's what a tortoise does. Like his physical therapist. Spike is the mission's mascot. He's getting to where he wants to stay out longer. And although he's up, but not exactly running. We're extremely happy to have him back. Just the fact that he's up on all fours again. He's standing up real good and straight and tall. Looked close to impossible last June. We were very worried about whether 
whether he would be able to recover enough to have some quality of life. A car backed over Spike, cracking the 14-year-old shell. His lungs sit right at the top where that shell was broken. LMPD jacked up the car, got Spike out, and even provided a police escort to Shively Animal Clinic in hospital. It was touch and go for several days. Veterinarians, however, managed to piece the shell. They had to use wire and acrylic paste. Back together again. They put this boat epoxy on him this, the next day because it started opening up again. Everything sealed up. And, uh, Spike still course. wouldn't make it if he didn't eat. Thankfully, the tortoise. One whole banana gone. Regained his appetite. Green bell peppers. And I think he likes them because they're crunchy. Down the hatch it goes. No one is happier to see Spike back than his roommate, William Duncan. In this case, it's a turtle's my best friend. <laughs> Spike may be a shell of his former self, but in his case. That's my whole purpose, uh, making sure he's okay. That's a good thing. He wants to keep going. In Louisville, John Charlton. He doesn't, doesn't show much sign of slowing down. WHAS 11 News.